Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. at Hamrock. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Um, yeah. But also, we have
Yeah. Bit better than last week. You got a pillow and everything? <laughs> oh, give nice. me that. Please. Do you want this chair? No. no. no? I, okay. I'm so used to okay. having baby chair. Sorry, I'm a few minutes late. Oh, this is nice, Frank. Is there, uh, do you want to amend any of the agenda? Do you want to take a look? Do you want to add anything? Or Pat? Yeah, there's a couple added to the top, and also I think we wanted to talk about 181 Edward Foster Road, the planting plan. Okay. And also the a couple of the um, uh, note the hearings have been postponed, continued till the fall, so we could let people know which ones are not on tonight. Okay. So. All right. So, make a motion to amend the agenda. I make a motion to amend the agenda to include 181 Edward Foster and some other discussions. And 12 Ocean Ave and 288. 12 Ocean Ave and 288. And lot seven on Summer Street. And lot seven on Summer Street. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. And then the the hearings that are going to be continued this evening, just if anybody's here for those, um, is that Gordon on Ocean Ave? Yes. Yes. And uh, when we get to that at that time, the applicants requested a two week. Two. Okay. So the next meeting. Yeah. And then. Um, August. Viviano, 6 Cl Cliff Road, right? Yeah. right. Oh, How long do they want to continue to? that for? Oh, they, so they heard from DEP and they might have a continuity. Okay. Oh. And is it Nassin? Nassin. 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 Okay. At 272 Central Ave. And how long does that want to be continued? I think that's the oh, next meeting too, yeah. The next that's meeting. So if anybody's here for those three, when we get to them, we're just going to continue them. Okay. Um, so we have one RDA Loftus, 62 Rebecca Road. Yes. Frank, that file is right with you there, too, on the top. Do you want it or do you want me to? Well, I wasn't at the last meeting, but I went through it and I didn't see any conditions other than the planting they had to do the last time. Okay. And didn't they get a CSC when I looked in the file? I thought there was a CSC. Yeah. yeah. And I think Frank wanted to look at the old yeah. requirements. Right. Was there? Did you see anything? Um, I didn't see anything that wasn't done. No. Okay. Carol looked to it too. <coughs> so you got to refresh my memory for one second. So you're proposing a 12 by 48 deck across the back of the house? Yes, there's already a 6 by 38 there. So we're just adding 6 feet out and 10 feet over to the side. Okay. Are you going to can leave that or you put in piling It doesn't need to Oh, we'd be using the same kind of sauna tube footing that is on the existing deck. We just put it out. You couldn't can't can leave it, of course. That'd be nice because you are going into 50 foot buffer with the, you know, by about six, seven but feet. That 50 foot buffer is Phragmites. That's. But it's still buffer. Right, but I'm just saying it's it it's because it grows up between. If you take an aerial view of the whole point, there's one spot where the Phragmites grow up between our backyard and a neighbor's backyard. Otherwise, it's all in a straight line. And that's the only reason that's within the, the 50 foot is that Well, the eight foot street. doesn't say that it's the buffer zone. The Phragmites just have that's to grow there. Your 50 foot buffer is being marked off the wetlands flag. Right. Because all right, so be it doesn't really matter what's growing there. It's still in the buffer. It's, okay. I just I didn't know if it would help that I had put um, a picture, a Google Map, Google Earth picture because you will see that. But I think they flagged that because they thought the Phragmites was in a wet zone. But if you if you saw that picture and saw that whole area, the Phragmites will grow all the way up to our houses. And I don't think we're all in the wetland all the way up to our houses. I think it's just unfortunately 
what that plant does if you don't mow it. But as you're saying, if they delineate it that saying, way, the wetland line is back here. Right, okay. but it, so uh, this it, is the wetlands. This is the buffer zone right, I'm it, talking about. We're not saying that's wetlands. We're saying that's your 50 foot no right. disturb, and you, the flagging of the wetlands. That's that's is that's back here, but mm -hmm. it's 50 feet. I'm just okay. thro throwing this out. Okay. okay. That you know, is it possible to can leave that deck where you already have pilings in for the smaller deck? Uh, we would have to check with the builder. No, he said to us that he would use the sauna tube footing like he had last time. I understand, time. but you, you yeah, know. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. So are we going to so continue I'm again? That out that, you know, it is in the buffer. Well, we can, you know, well, why don't we go ahead and, yeah. and go through all the different members. Usually yeah. every, each member has an opportunity to say something. If there's anybody in the audience that has any interest in your project, okay. they can. And then maybe we can see what we can work out from there. Okay. okay? No. Not, I don't have anything to say. Richard, um, and he stole my thunder. I'd, I'd want to know if there was any possibility of, of cantilevering so that that wouldn't have to be disturbed. Okay. Okay. Otherwise, it's fine. Lisa? Yeah. Pat, did you have a chance at all to take a well, look at that? Just began at the last meeting, I wasn't at that one. I mean, right. I just think that, you know, we're attempting to keep everything out of the 50 feet, and if there's a way to, you know, move things out, that would be the preference. Right? I didn't hear the beginning of hearing, so. Is there anybody in the audience for this project? So typically what we look to do is, is to not have anything built in the 50-foot buffer zone unless there's a compelling reason to do that. Um, if during the construction people can offset other forms of disturbance or pollution or something like that, that um, there's a good reason to work in the 50, um, then we would we would consider that. A, a deck is not a very intrusive thing. It's not like digging a foundation or something. Um, and so what Penny's asking, Richard, is if there's any way that the deck could be supported without excavating or digging in the 50-foot buffer. Your deck would still overhang it, mm -hmm. but there'd be no excavation um, or any disturbance in the 50-foot buffer. It looks to me, I'm not a structural engineer, but it looks to me like it would be possible for you to do that. And if we gave you a, a positive determination <clears throat> with the stipulation that they didn't disturb the 50-foot buffer, then you just have to go back to your contractor, figure that out. What you really should have with this plan, and we probably should have mentioned it to you at the last meeting, is some sort of building plan. You've given us a plot plan and you're showing a real brief outline, but we don't know how you're going to support that, and we should probably should have said that to you at the last meeting. There should be some sort of plan. You're obviously going to have to give something to the building department um, yes, to, we to get a to permit. Yes, the department actually, and they said that this, the putting plan would work, so we didn't know we had to bring it to this, but yeah. I think the builder has that and did say that he would. So if you, if you were to say to him, the, the commission would like to see this out of any of the supports out of the buffer, it means that that corner of your deck they could probably come up with a beam or something to support that, or quite possibly instead of 48 feet, the deck might have to be 42 or something. Right. Like we could, if, if we if we cut back the 10 feet that's in front of that. Uh, well, you, you you work it out. If, you, if, 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 if that's the sense of the yeah. well, if that's the sense of the board. But if you talk to the, your builder and he thinks he can run a beam out and, and even get back half of it or something. You, you know, that could work. That's fine. All right? We're, just we're not <laughs> saying you can't build it. No, we're we saying understand. You, you can't. Yeah, we understand. But just try another method. Yeah, we understand. Okay. Um, so. I'll make a motion for a positive. With the negative? I'm sorry. I will make a, a motion for a negative. Please throw you off. I'm out of whack. Yeah. I, no, I said it. With the stipulation, there's no disturbance in the 50 foot buffer. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's it. Thanks. Um, I think she was very happy. We have uh, Sharon 
124 Man, Lot, Man Hill Road, new build continued. We continued it. We had a site visit. Did you call me? I went down. I went down there. It's pretty, pretty thick. I know that. I mean, I've been by it, but I went to the yeah. site visit. It was a good site visit. It was yeah. really good. Yeah. I wish I could see. I got it. Thank you. Um, is, if, uh, with the folks that are in the back that are interested in seeing it, I'm just wondering if we can. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah do you mind? Sure. Yeah. I've, I've seen the plan. Greg, try, yeah, I guess. Lisa, can you see that enough? You can move towards Kevin a little bit. He won't bite too much. <laughs> <laughs> you can push Kat back in the seat. I might bite that. Watch out. <laughs> Why don't you move that chest to me so that is being attacked? Okay. For the record, my name is Greg Morris. I'm a registered engineer, Morris Engineering, representing Doug Sheeran, who's with us here tonight. This is a continued notice of intent filing for a new single family home that the applicant is proposing at 124 Man Hill Road. Um, at the last meeting, I discussed the wetland line, which is shown here in blue. This was approved previously through an ANRAD process. We discussed the proposed access to the site, the proposed dwelling location. Uh, the 50-foot buffer here shown in red and the 100-foot buffer shown in green. The Commission asked for a couple of changes to the plan and the Commission asked to go on a site walk. We conducted a site walk. Uh, Penny, Frank, Pat, myself, and a couple of the abutters were present. Uh, and basically what we've done is we've submitted a revised plan that addresses, I think, the concerns the Commission had previously. Those changes were we pulled the house back further from the wetland resource. We originally had it proposed at 53 feet. It's now proposed at a minimum distance of 58 feet. So we further, right there along the edge of the excavation for that foundation, that's a four foot deep frost wall foundation. We're proposing to install sheet piling along the edge of the foundation. So we really will have no disturbance into that 50 foot zone. We've provided eight feet there to dig a hole four feet deep, and we're providing for sheet piling within that area as well. We've scaled the deck back. The deck used to extend out to the 50-foot buffer. We've pulled it back um, approximately six feet off of the 50-foot buffer. Along the 50, we've proposed a split rail fence along the backyard, and then along the driveway, we've added conservation posts, saying that this will be a no-disturb zone. Um, we discussed real briefly um, at the site visit, the potential on this site to install, um, if, a, if approved, the split rail fence first and really create a permanent barrier there as one of the first pieces of construction. Um, this site is very, very thick uh, vegetation-wise, and I think the concern was that um, although something might be staked in the field, it might not really be visible. So if one of the first pieces, if the commission conditioned it, was to install the fence along the 50-foot buffer, the applicant would be willing to do so. Uh, as far as stormwater management, I discussed that at the previous meeting. We had four dry wells along the corners of the property. We had crushed stone infiltration trenches along the uh, driveway as well, all picking up our rates in volume of runoff uh, so that our post-development rates of runoff off this site matched the pre-development rates of runoff off of this site. Furthermore, the site discharges down gradient to a tidal area. Um, you're not required to meet those pre and post rates. I think the changes that we made pulling the foundation back uh, and proposing that the fencing go in prior to construction uh, address the majority of the concerns that the, that the board had implied at the last meeting. And I'd turn it over for any questions. Um, Penny? Now, I'm not an expert on the stormwater management, so I'm going to leave that to someone else. But um, 
I'm happy with it being moved back. The fence is major to me before any construction starts. So um, it does sit within that little envelope. Bill? No, I'm sorry I couldn't make the site visit, but I did go down there. And uh, it, you're, you're right, it is thick. But it seems like you've pulled everything back within the parameters that we were looking for. So, And the stormwater runoff would be the same as it is now. Correct. That's what we're saying, right? Correct. This site fully complies with the 50-foot no disturb buffer zone. Respects that. Lisa? No, he's done everything that was asked of him in this meeting. Pat, do you have any um, additional comments? Uh, one of the questions that came up on the site visit was where the driveway is, the, that side, it's a fairly steep slope. <coughs> you cut that driveway in there, is there going to be any problems with uh, erosion to the abutter where the tennis court area is? It's pretty steep. Yeah. Now, where we have the driveway cut in, the driveway itself, uh, from north to south is, is relatively flat. It's elevation 24 out on Manhill Road. It's elevation 25 in front of the garage. The slope that we're talking about is from the driveway west to the abutters property here. There is a little bit of a gradient here. The abutters at elevation 30. Our driveway again is down at 24. We're not proposing to cut into that embankment along the edge of the driveway here. The location that we are proposing to cut into that embankment is down here at the turnaround of the driveway where we do have a three foot high uh, landscape retaining wall proposed, three feet. So I don't see any uh, excessive erosion coming across that driveway. Uh, I don't see us disturbing that slope. It is a rather um, short area where that slope is and then the majority of the site is much flatter topography. So it's essentially a six foot slope. It's a six foot. That drop. doesn't, yeah. It, it that doesn't need any support there? No. What I would ask, Fred, is will you leave the vegetation as it is on that slope? Because it is already thick. Or do you, does the client plan on wiping it out and doing landscape? I, I would imagine that we're planning on landscaping the slope. Removing, removing some of the vegetation that's there. So then I think if this does go through, then we would want, want to stipulate that that's heavily landscaped to keep it in place. Because that's the last thing you want, your client would want, is that slope to wash into their driveway. Correct. You know, if, if you plan on, you know, clearing that. But that's something, if it goes, we can condition. Just another thought on the conservation post and the split, split rail fence. Um, I would recommend just a couple more conservation posts in the area of the split rail fence, just so that people won't just think it's a fence. It's also an area of no disturbance beyond that. So they, I know you're talking about two along the driveway and then maybe two in the area of the fence somewhere. Yeah, we, we have two, two conservation posts along the driveway and then the split rail fence in the backyard. We could certainly add two more signs along the split rail fence. Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody in the audience would like to speak to this? Uh, just one question, just to make sure. sure. And just for that, you have to state your name and address. I'm Zach Tartle and uh, 382 Hatterley. Sure. And so uh, with the tennis court, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I know you said a little bit about the landscape and everything. I have gone down there, and it's extremely steep. Mm -hmm. So uh, even with uh, some sort of landscaping on there, depending on what kind of landscaping it is, with the water runoff, because it's a whole hill going all the way down that hill, um, it is pretty large wa water runoff during any of the rainstorms. The last storm we just had, we had quite a bit. So if, like, if there's any mulch or anything like that, like, that's just washed. Sure. So. I wouldn't think that they want that washed into the driveway. That's why I'm saying I think we, we would stipulate a planting plant, heavy shrubbery, you know, that will hold, hold that hill, hill in place. I'm not sure it's something we would ask to see. Right, yeah. You know, because we don't that want way. that. You certainly don't want it, and I wouldn't think whoever buys that house would want it either. 
that they wanted to hear. Okay. We, um, because this property is in proximity to a wetlands, when the town of Citra adopted the stormwater bylaw, if this property weren't adjacent to a wetlands or the hearing wasn't with us, the planning board would request a stormwater review. But because it's in front of the commission, the commission will have a stormwater review. Part of that is we will ask an engineer to review Mr. Morse's calculations to be sure that they're compliant, that water is managed on site as best as possible, that there won't be <coughs> additional water running onto Man Hill. That was one of the concerns that was um, brought up by uh, folks that live in the, in the area, that we wouldn't have additional water running down Man Hill, because ultimately that would adversely affect the marsh at the bottom of the hill. So we're going to make sure that, as best we can, that there's not additional water flowing out onto Man Hill. They've got to contain that. As Mr. Morse pointed out, because this flows downhill and into that area, um, they, they have a good, pretty good way to control it. It's not like this is sitting above somebody else's property, but it is ultimately going to impact the Squashka Pond and the marsh to some degree. So we want to make sure that that water doesn't just flow freely, that it still acts sort of as naturally as possible. Um, one of the thoughts, Pat, and maybe this could be part of your application. You're still building all between the 50 and the 100. Right. So typically we'd look for some sort of mitigation or ways to enhance the area that um, you're developing. I don't know that much about the plant material that we saw out there. It's so It's so thick. But would it be... Would there be any advantage or any positive piece to actually clear some between the 50 and the wetlands line, a small amount, maybe 10 or 15 feet, and revegetate that with more native species? Is I don't know. Um, is that something that we? I mean, there's an original flagging with a report of what plants are out there. Um. Or is there any? I mean, they have very little lawn on this house between the house and the driveway there's there's almost no area to do anything other than a small lawn um, but it, it seems to me like it would be beneficial to have if all those plants are native and and they're functioning the way we hope that they would that's fine but if it's a bunch of like bittersweet or or, or things that I just choke and everything out would would there be any advantage? Um, yeah, especially out by the street, there is some um, Phragmites and Bittersweet heading um, down the street. Right. To, to maybe enhance that with some um, better plantings or, or more native plantings? Yeah, I'm sure there's a possibility of that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not a, um, a, a plant expert, so I can't speak to the vegetation. But I mean, I, I would think, given the thickness of the site, even if you were to clear 10 feet into it, given some time, it's just going to grow yeah, back. Gonna back. It out. And right. yeah, unless you really. Well, unless that's part of the orders to maintain that or something like that. Yeah. You know, if there was a row of, yeah. and I don't know whether blueberries, high bush. Uh, I mean, I, I think we'd certainly be willing to, to do a 10 foot strip of plantings along, you know, 40 to 50 foot zone there or up along the driveway if that's something the commission uh, do you see any gain for for the environment with that or do we just leave it alone i don't know i mean you're going to have uh from the 30 foot back to the wetland line is going to be what's going there now and uh, part of it is to not have a disturbance on the 50. so i don't know it's a trade-off you know you can disturb it I mean, if we had a site that we knew that there were a lot of invasives, we'd say get rid of the invasives, clean it up, replant it with um, more native habitat. I don't think you have that scenario here with as much invasives as some of the other sites we've seen. Okay. Yeah, we've done it more, too, where people have needed to get inside the 50 
to do the work too. We said, gee, you're going to be inside the 50, then clear out all these invasives. But I mean, this is a large area. Of well, I, I would. I mean, I'm not pr encouraging that more be cleared, and, unless there's a good, solid reason for doing that. But if, in looking at that, you had a, a, a botanist or somebody that came back and said, you know, we could make this enhance this a little bit more. Um, I mean, we're going to have a a fence, and they know that they're not going to go beyond that. Mm -hmm. So that's all well and good. But um, I know as you go further down, there's a lot of frags, and there's still a whole problem with all the drainage that occurs um, between. Yeah. yeah. And that, I'm just wondering, oftentimes, again, we look for some mitigation or something close by. I don't know. Did anybody take a look at that? Is that clear or, or is that moving freely? Yeah, there, there is a culvert under Man Hill Road here which drains between Stone Ave and Man Hill Road. And I think we leave that's free flowing. Because I know that keeps washing over. Is, is anybody that lives down there, that, that culvert that's at the bottom, it almost looked to me like it was about ready to be blocked off. It's still, it's still clear. Uh, Roberta Sullivan, East of the 382. Uh, Frank, you know, this uh, winter with that storm we had in February, that whole part of that road on that right side flooded completely right. with a, a lake. So that's a, that stream flows very freely. I know okay. a lot of people don't think it does, but it goes under stone, feeds those ponds, and um, yeah, it's moving all the time. Um, well, we, I mean, we did some studies from the squash kit when we talked about the whole floodgate piece and yeah. all those sort of things. So, but it's just didn't know how much of that changed over the no, winter. No, I gotta tell you, you know, through the years my husband used to cut just the top of our tennis court, try to keep that view down, and that stuff just was gonna grow back. Um, it was tough the other day walking down there. Right. And, um, you know, it's interesting, I've sat through enough of these meetings to hear you um, talk about the 50 foot buffer Jerry Berry wants to stay away from, and now tonight you're like thinking, oh, we could go in at 10 feet. You know? Well, I'm not saying we should necessarily. <laughs> like, well, I, no, I understand what you're saying, putting something in there better, but I have a feeling whatever's in there is just going to beat it back. And, and maybe it won't. I just asked the question. A lot of times yeah. when we look at sites, and, and you, you were there the day that we yeah. were there, and you barely can't see into the I know. brush. And that's fine if we just put a, yeah. that up and you know that that's going to be something that's going on. But oftentimes when we're on sites and we know that there's a lot of invasive species, we actually look for the applicant to work with the commission and remove some of the invasives right. and replant with something that would be a more positive um, yeah, no, I, I understand planting. Yeah, I what saying. But that, that stream still flows quite freely there. Okay. Yeah. The other thing different about this one too, Frank, it's, a, it's kind of a mixed area of invasives and native plants in there. So you'd be taking out some native plants if you were trying to get in the 10 feet to get out some invasives. You'd probably end up you know, with a, a mix of plants getting destroyed. Whereas if it were a whole stretch of knotweed or phragmites, it would make sense to take that out and plant yeah. something. I think this one, it's, I mean, it's, it's a, a it's tough spot to It's the opportunity there. for the commission at a time yeah. when someone's looking to build in those areas yeah. to try to get some mitigation right. or try to square away some things that have been altered yeah. or, or changed in the past. And not right. to make it more difficult for the applicant, but yeah. it is the opportunity for us to look at that. Right. Yeah, and the thought of the pipe down below, if that were not functioning, that would have been a, a good thing that could have been taken on, too. You know, if that was clogged and needed some work, that maybe right. could be something to tie into it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, I mean, like, Retiria, yeah. 106 days in a row. So Bobby's point that the culvert moves pretty easily, but the whole, from this last winter, even starting at the top of the hill, there's been a lot of deterioration of that road and buffaloing from whatever runoff or whatever's been going. So so I'm not sure if it is comparable to that six foot um, embankment going down to the tennis courts. But if you go down the road, there's quite a lot of um, asphalt breaking, cracks in the road, spill off, things like that. I mean, I guess that's another conversation to have with Public Works because that road's been moved 
some work anyway. Right. So I don't know if there must be water coming in under that road going down into that culvert because it does it doesn't only flood at storms either. <laughs> I mean it, it's yeah. a well I think the road is you know, kind of flat yeah. out a little bit. Well so Man Hill has a pretty good crown to it, so that water is shed to either side and as it gains momentum going down the road, it carries silt and right, but it's also kind of cracking not only on the you know, it's got the rays, but it also is buckling a bit down the center. All right. And I'm not sure, you know, sometimes you have to see things for a while, you don't see them anymore, you know, but sure. it's pretty apparent now um, that the road is at some point going to need attention because it's it really got beaten up last winter. Mm -hmm. So there are some cracks in the actual center of that road okay. um, where, you know, I'm no engineer, but, you know, water finds a way. Well, the, the ground there yeah. doesn't. Does it it, everything just breaks out at the yeah. surface. So, oh. and if it freezes, it heaves the road up anyway. So. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? A motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thanks. Great. Yeah. Well, there's going to be a couple more houses. That's what I mean. Because once they sewered that road, oh, before God. none of this ground could pass a perk test. Yeah. It was all just very awful soil. And so now that they've put sewer along Hadley, some of these lots that were not developable, they can now build homes. I have a question. Considering it, it, it seems to be the same question over and over again, and there's no horticulturist here, wouldn't it behoove one of us maybe to go to a nursery that would give us a laundry list of different plants for doing? Yeah. Okay. We do get that periodically. If we have a site that people yeah. are trying to alter some things so yeah, they're inside yeah. the 50 or the yeah, side. We would definitely say we want a planting plan, we want yeah, a planting plan. That was kind of the way you just brought that up. Maybe this would be a direction to go in, but a lot of times either we'll hire somebody or they will. Okay. Well, we have like grab homes as a lot of them. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. We've right. actually gone on a full box for your plan. This is native, yep. and you know the balance of the two, and then determine whether it's good plants or native plants, or it's kind of like, maybe the longs here and doing that. Right. Yeah. Um, so we could get everybody out of here. Um, your interests? Uh, mine? Yeah. Uh, the I think it's on the top other administrative issues, uh, enforcement slash note of, in, uh, of intent, uh, central avenue. Okay. Thank you for asking. Sure. Um, well, why don't we jump into that? Um, Russ Clark, Central Ave. So why don't you come up and then we sure. and then you can get on your way. Well, we have a whole bunch of things yeah, no, and we have no time piece. Sure. Frank, there's a draft enforcement letter up there to piles and kind of stuff. They have one? No, pretty good idea. We all piece it together. I want to see it. I think it's going to go. Definitely. I think I started mine. I don't have any mind. Pat was saying there was a, a draft enforcement order for this. Um, so I guess what, we two meetings ago, mm -hmm. two two or three. One meeting ago. It was just meeting. before July fourth. Okay. Yeah. Late, um, late June. You were in, and we talked again about the piece, the things that are stored on them. Yep, and doing the notice of intent. I um in that and just time, for the heck of it, your name. And oh, sure. Russell Clark, 8 Webster Street, Humrock. Sure. Um, 
Yeah, the last meeting we were in, I was hoping to have a notice of intent for this meeting with the proper filing and notification of butters and everything. I contacted uh, John Keefe of Keefe and Associates, and he's on it between the holiday and everything else going on. And then I, um, I talked to him last week, and he just didn't get out there from the heat. I, I texted him today, and he said he was going to do the field work tomorrow. And, and that's where I'm at. So I, I do have a professional surveyor involved to, to draw a plan and to, to represent, you know, what I propose to do, which, you know, I think kind of okay. has been done in the past. So um, no ill intent. Right. Any? Well, I, I, I have a problem with all this. This has been going on since May. Um, on June 10th, do we close the meeting on the 10th, the June 24th, the 24th, he came in and said we couldn't get it done, so then we gave it to the 9th. I mean, this is going on for months. Um, from when Pat first spoke to you, it was in May at some point. I can't remember the exact date. And um, my feeling is that we should have made you remove those trailers until you filed a notice of intent. Because my feeling is that you are not supposed to be storing anything on the marsh grass in, in, in you know, a resource area. So I'm, I personally, I'm only speaking for me, I feel as though this has gone on way too long. Can I uh, answer something to that? Sure. Mr. Chairman, I, I don't think I have anything stored on marsh grass. Zero. There's two trailers. Not on marsh grass. I can see the grass underneath that. I was just down there. We may have a difference of opinion of definition of grass. It's not marsh grass. It could be dune grass. I don't think uh, it's grass. All right. Yeah. Well, it's grass. Right. It, you're not, it, that's a resource there. And I really feel as though we would have seen a notice of intent. Part of my argument is going to be wait, that. Wait, if that stuff hit, you would have been made to Part of my it. argument is going to be that. Um, Cars and things have been stored on that for years. So I'm not doing anything different than hasn't been done in the past. And I, I do have pictures of that, which I really don't want to get into tonight, but it was going to be part of my notice of intent when okay. it comes in to, to prove that it's been done long, long before. Oh. So Penny, what, I think what we're, we have two things. I mean, yeah. we, we've asked Mr. Clark yeah. for um, to get a filing done. He's saying that he's got an engineer on it. It's not meeting our deadline. So I think that's, and he's here to explain why. I think we should just run through this and, and see what the other members think. But I really don't want to, yeah. if we're going to have a debate about this, I'd rather have the information that we need and with his engineer and whatever. But it can't be a month from now, as Penny points out, it's already been some time. So no, but and I've I, like I said, I texted John today. I put the little push under him. I know last week was hot, and I just it, okay. field work was just not fun to do last week. It was yeah, okay. and yeah. <laughs> all right, some things are out of my control, Bill? and I do apologize. Um, I think that we didn't we get a petition, a signed petition about this. Today. Yes, you did. Yeah, so that's my concern is that there are I do quite a few. How many signatures? Twenty-five. But if you I and I'm sorry, just for the record, you're I'm sorry, Keith Jansen, one forty eight seven eleven. And I I guess I didn't see that. Yeah, um we got it later on uh this evening and I can bring it up for you if you want. That's sorry. Yeah, there's uh there's quite a few people that signed the petition, so I'm concerned about the neighborhood reaction and them wanting to see something from us here. Mr. Chairman, if yeah. you'd like to make copies for you, I emailed it. Yes, it was late, but I do have copies if you like. Okay. It. Well, I just got it afterwards. I, I mean, I appreciate you no have that, but okay. So that's, I just wanted to interject that piece that you know, we, are, we are getting feedback from the neighbors sure. uh, asking for some definitive action. Okay. Um, if we're not going to do a full discussion tonight, the one concern I have is that there be some consistency established in this regard. If it's in a conservation zone, in a wetland area, and anything like that, 
it really, I don't think, can be allowed. Now, if we need to prove that, that's fine. The fact that other people have done it in the past, I think has no relevance at all. There are lots of things throughout this town that should not have been done and should not perhaps have been allowed or have been overlooked. It doesn't make it right. And uh, so I think we have to get some consistency. Okay. Kevin? Lisa? Any chance you could move the containers temporarily uh, while you're waiting to get your I expert? I would love to. I mean, the buoys I can probably get rid of. There's three of them. One of them I'm actually going to set. I think it's kind of an emergency up in Luck River. That's what they're stored for. The trailers, the space I used to store them at has been developed, and that's why I'm in a quandary. And that This land came to me this winter. It was like it just fell into my lap. And it was perfect timing for everything. So I'm just crossing my fingers that things will work out. That's all. So I, I don't really have a temporary place to put them. My yard is too small down on Rock. I, I just don't have the room on it. That's the problem. How large are these containers? I, I haven't been to your property. Oh, the trailer? No, no it's, a, it's a flat trailer. It's for my 24-foot Carolina skiff. It's, it's, it's that type of trailer. It's not a box trailer. It's not a... It's just a low, flat trailer. You, you'd barely notice it if you drove by. You really would. You'd barely notice it. Evidently, 25 people did, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I think, I can't speak, I don't know. Some of the neighbors I've talked to were, were fine with everything. I'm going to be interested to see that petition, but... Um, well, what we, I think what the concern is, obviously, is that we've been at this for a bit to try to get this resolved. The commission gets frustrated, I think, because there's a number of activities, not just yours, but all, all up and down the coast, not just Hamarok, but cliffs, lighthouse, or whatever. Some people come in, get their permits, get permission, do, do what they're required to do in a resource area. They, it's a filing that's required to, to do an activity. And then the commission has the opportunity to look at that and say, is it allowed, is it not allowed? And if the process is followed, it means that someone asks first and then does that. In this particular case, your, your contention is that the stuff, some of it's always been there and this is just a continued use. Others are saying, well, this is, it's been, um, there's more going on or there's things there that weren't there before, whatever. I mean, that's what we have to sort of mull through. But I want to get to that point, it, too, there's a lot I'm of There's a lot of people with frustration that are saying, well, wait a minute, I, you know, I've done my work, I've done my filings, I've, d I've done what I'm supposed to do. Um, I've come before the commission and I either got approved or I got denied or I got approved with conditions. We, we want to get to that point. And, and uh, I can appreciate your trying to get people to do some of the stuff by do the same thing but sometimes you have to say it's got to get done it's it, we have to get to that point where we're having a hearing we can do an enforcement order um, I'd just like to say I did call John I think it was two and a half weeks ago and I know we were aware of this maybe three and a half weeks ago like I said it was just before the vacation I, I, I haven't avoided a meeting since I've been asked to come no, here. No, and, and, and to you do, that's true, because we send stuff to folks that we never hear from, they never come before us, so... I, I'm not ashamed. I'm not I, I, trying to hide from anybody. I mean, I'll take it in the nose if I have to, and I, I hope we can work through it, but I just, you know... I, I am. That's what I'm trying to read it down. I'm trying to get things on the table here. And not that I don't take any of this lightly, but if, if he were digging in the marsh or, or excavating or something like that, obviously it would be, Absolutely. in my mind, a lot more serious thing than, than a, a vehicle that's not, dis, that's not digging up the marsh. I mean, I'm not saying it's right or wrong until we get to that point, but <coughs> if this were being excavated or, or bulldozed or whatever, I think I'd have an entirely different yeah, pattern. Yeah, I'd just like to comment on two things. One that Penny was talking about, it hasn't been going on a while. We don't do enforcement orders lightly. We ask people to do a notice of intent. If it comes in in a timely fashion, that's how uh, we do it. If it seems like we're getting put off and it seems like we don't know when this is going to happen. So that's why we take the step for an enforcement order. And 
it, it's presented to the commission tonight. They can read through it, uh, ratify it, make changes to it. And sometimes that's the thing that gets things done. The other thing, what Richard said is, um, you know, because things have gone on there in the past, that's a past violation. I mean, it's still a violation. We're not saying that, gee, it was okay then, it's not okay now. It wasn't okay then, but for some reason it didn't get picked up on. I think what, what our role is, is to prevent resources from getting trampled, run over, or whatever. And it's beach grass, and like Frank said, it's not being excavated, but it is getting flattened down. You can, you can see tire marks going in there. Those aren't um, mine. Well, and, <laughs> but, but we're the trailer, the trailer's sitting there, and even the four tires, I mean, it, yeah. you could say, gee, it's a minor violation, but it's still a violation. Yeah. And, and it is precedent setting kind of stuff. We get everybody going by and say, gee, I guess it's fine to do stuff there. It's like, no, it isn't, and we have to let it be known in public that it isn't, so. I parked those trailers, and I parked them once. They went in, right after my, my one from my Carolina skiff went in, right after I bought the land. I mean, that, I had a place to put it, and that was it, it has moved. You know, and it'll move again probably. I usually pull my boat. I mean, I might move it once to wash the bottom of the boat and then it'll go back, but I pull the boat. I try to be done by Christmas. Yeah. And that's well, it. it would, well, that's the only time it moves. Well, we'll find out whether it stays out long or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, like I say, it, 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 there's other people that use that land and, and um, and have. And some of them have received letters recently too. I mean, there's, there's yeah, but it's my land. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, on your piece. But, yeah. but along Central Lab, there are several other. Going to go next door for that problem. We've, yeah. you know, we've had equipment removed. We've had walls taken down. We've had, you know, that whole stretch that's just very visible and it's on a salt marsh or a dune. So, um, yeah. you know, I understand your frustration that you have land that you'd like to do something with, and I think. Very when minimal, you, too. Very minimal. You, you know, we, we have asked you to file, and that can be reviewed by the commission. So. Steve? Yeah, I just want to say, I mean, all of Humrock is a resource area. So without singling out Mr. Clark, are, are we saying that it's not okay to keep a boat trailer in Humrock? I mean, well, but you know, but, you know what, but it, that's going to be for the debate. I, I want to just get to that point. What I want right now is the information in front of us and have a debate on this. I. I if that's part of the discussion at that point, that's fine. Yeah, that's I want to get to that. I want the information in here so that we can open a hearing and get that put forward, okay? Yes, I, my last text to John, I, I asked him how he did last week. Did he beat the heat on the beach? I'm trying to remember what I wrote to him. And he well, said, I think you've been dying to be down a Humrock last yeah, week. Well, yeah, I know it, I know it. But, but he, says, uh, he says, I'm sorry, I'm backed up. I'm going to try and get to it. I'm, I'm on cleanup now. I'm going to try and get to it Tuesday. So after I leave tonight, I'll send him another text. And I think I did say to him I was going to be in the hot seat tonight, Monday night. So, um, you know, I'm, the dialogue's there, and I'm trying to politely um, push forward. So. Um, Yes, sir. Uh, Keith Jansen, 148 uh, Central Avenue. Um, certainly more sensitive to the situation. We live right across the street at 148 Central. Uh, in terms of pre existing use, we've uh, lived there 14 years and there's been no uh, use from storing commercial materials or other things, cars, etc., when illegally parked because along Central Avenue, it clearly says no parking either side. If someone chooses to park illegally, we typically call the police, except on July 30th because they're not going to do anything because the God bless them, they've got other things on their mind. Um, with respect to uh, how it's zoned, and maybe to speak to your uh, question, uh, the area specific is zoned in the town of Situate via the, uh, uh, the October 25th map as salt marsh and tidewater conservation land. So frankly, in my opinion, and I would hope uh, the Conservation Commission would share this, that those properties zoned as such wouldn't be used for storage of and, and we will we will address yeah, that. We can't and, 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 and I want to get at it sooner okay. than later. But, but what we're asking for is the 25 neighbors to have the materials removed immediately, let the chips fall where they may through the appropriate process that frankly we started several months ago, including on April 29th when the first letter was written to the Conservation Commission. Okay. All right. Um, I mean, so at this point, there's an enforcement order in front of you. Um, there's a request and some possible movement on an NOI. An enforcement order can be used to push along the notice of intent process, or it could be used to fine people um, if things don't take place by a certain date, or um, you know, two different ways to go, and we're not getting it done through the notice of intent at this point. Okay. 
Does it, has anybody else had a chance to? It's pretty much a form letter. So if we are, if go ahead, sorry. if we issue this this evening, we, we choose what goes on it. And if we say in that enforcement order that we want this, I mean, we've already said to you we want to file by a date. We thought we had that date. It's been missed. So that if, was just before. If, if we set that date, can this reali realistically be at the next meeting? You could. You could choose choose to do that way. Uh, I mean, it can be filed with a revised date. Okay. If that's what you'd like to do. I mean, you can go from big fines to we want it in a hurry, Russell. Let's get going on it. I mean, you have a choice of doing that. But enforcement order. Well, I'd, I'd like to set a thing and say if it's not here by the next one, we're gonna we're gonna start fining. Yeah, I agree. Okay. And so and that's it. Okay. So you want to ratify that with that kind of if, language? If everybody's in, in agreement with that. All right. All right. So, what would you like us to have in language um, on that? Then you're the agent. Okay, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's <laughs> options. I mean, the option could be all right. You've you've picked a new date that we have an enforcement order in place that goes to DEP. So DEP is waiting to hear what happens. And then if the notice of intent comes in and that is acceptable, it's complete, it's got resource area delineated, it's got the abutters and all that, then we just hear it as a notice of intent. Right. And we can close out an enforcement audit once we issue an order of conditions or that I That would be fine. That sounds good. Okay. Okay. All right. And Russell, you, you can get the parties to be together to be able to get all that information. I, I hope I can. I'm, I'll text John uh, tonight to, and I'll talk to him tomorrow. Yeah, you're supposed to get the field work done tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, I, okay. I think the form he's done them before, they, they said they're kind of a boilerplate, and then I got some satellite photos that show stuff on, but we'll show that the next So week. it needs to be in 10 days before. Carol, what were you saying? Uh, maybe a couple of days? August <laughs> That's the meeting. It has to be in the right. 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 Yeah, meeting. That's right. Thursday of next week. This Thursday. Yeah, I know. But take the paper three or four days. It has to be in five days before the hearing. Right. Okay. So you got to get with him and get in there. What day is Thursday? August first. Thursday's the 25th. 25th. Okay. I think that's reasonable. Yeah. Okay. Set? Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> no, um, Twelve Ocean a Ocean Drive. Discuss Twelve Ocean Drive. Okay, this was a call that came in on Friday. We, Lisa and I had been out to Ocean Drive to two other sites earlier that day, um, and then this was a call from someone who had been denied a project in the past. And it turned out there was sand uh, in a dune area, and he wanted to push the sand back onto the beach, so in the process, ripped up all the dune grass, then created a berm, and then put a fence in, and uh, there was no permit, and there was no call to us or anything. So I contacted the property owner, and uh, he's out of town on the 5th. So I said that um, he'd be getting a letter from us, it's in violation of the Wetlands Act and the bylaw, and we'd expect to see him in at a meeting on the 19th. So I can get a, a letter out to you in the next couple of days and get it to him. Okay. Um, can, can I ask the address again? It's, it's 12 Ocean Drive, but there's also a parcel at 10 that he owns, and then this grassy dune is to the right of that. There's no lot number. I mean, there's no house number. It's a lot. But it's all owned by. Ocean Drive is, is that 
Yes, yes. It's near Oceanside. Yes, it is. It is right near Oceanside. That's where I get confused. Yes, it's there. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Frank, okay. can I just continue those here, here, and then we're hoping to get it? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yep. So, Gordon. I um, need a motion to continue Gordon to August 5th at 6.30. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. I make a motion to continue 6 Cliff Ave. I'm not going to kill your name. To 640 on August 5th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I make a motion to continue Nashon to 72 Central Ave to 650 on August 5th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Penny. Okay. Um, so you're going to issue a violation letter with a request that he, strong request that he come into the meeting on the 19th, August okay. 19th. All right. So is it stabilized for right now? Um, we could take a, a trip out there. Um, you know, I, um, I. Is there anything we should be asking him to do in the meantime to? Uh, Fence it or stabilize it or hate it. He might have fenced an area that people have used for access. So I, I have to go out there. If anybody wants to come out, mm -hmm. uh, my Tumor Art crew that shows up. Uh, <laughs> Jeez. So. Is that the one that you, is that the letter that you already sent out to somebody? Because I no. know you sent out. Uh, I sent an email out an email to this guy. Right. Yeah. yeah. I saw that. Yeah, okay. Oh, I missed that. Could I you please this email me when you're going? Yes. Oh, yeah. I can set Maybe up. Maybe the they can't get week. here soon enough, huh? Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. We were one house away. Well, two houses away when we were down there the other day for another issue. <laughs> you can bring that up too. If um. Okay. Um. Two eighty eight Gannett Road is a CFC. Yes. This was a long time ago completed septic project. They went back with the as built to board help, but never brought it to us. And they're closing on the house next Monday. And it's in, and there's no issues. Everything's going back. I couldn't even find out where they put it. Okay. It was uh, in good shape. So. And Lot 7, Summer Street? Lot 7, Summer Street. This had come in in the past. Uh, Paul Marabito's involved, and there's like 7, 8, 9. It's on the corner, Clap and Summer. Mm -hmm. And it was an, kind of an unusual order of conditions in that it, it approved an order of conditions, but it said you couldn't disturb the resource area. But the only way they could have built it was to disturb the resource area. So he went back and he must have either purchased property from an abutter or got some kind of an easement because now there's a plan showing that he can avoid resource area. But it came in late on Friday, so we didn't have it up for a vote today. But I wanted to bring it up because we need to site visit that one. So the best of my recollection with this one, I think that was, was that Cohn's um, property? And um, way back when we did this, they had the opportunity to bring that driveway in and not go over wetlands. But there was some issue, either they had to work out something with the neighbor or the neighbor was using their land or yeah, I that's can't what it was. too yeah. long ago. Yeah. But at any rate, we issued a set of orders that basically said, yeah, you can go in. Because there's other wetlands in the back. Yeah. There were setbacks for the septic and all that sort of stuff. It's sort of a piece of uplands surrounded by almost entirely by wetlands except there's this piece that comes in off of clap road that would get, give them access mm -hmm. and and they wanted to be able to to put their driveway over a piece of wetlands and we said that you don't need to do that that you can build your driveway mm -hmm. all on uplands yeah that sounds and like so it. i think we conditioned yeah. it uh, yeah, but uh, nobody has seen what the new plan is. I think they took a different route in there. So um, it came in on Friday. So I figured we'd get the old plans and the order. So maybe we have to amend the orders for that? Yeah, I would think so. Okay. Did it ever get recorded? Don't know. So. Mr. Bjorklund? Yeah, could, I think you were. I, I was on the commission when this came in, although I didn't vote on it. <coughs> what happened was, and Penny was with me, as commission members, we met with... Mr. Marabito's uh, here in this room, I believe. Yeah. And the commission allowed and conditioned the construction of the house, but the driveway was coming in from Summer Street, and they had received a small easement from Mr. Small, the next door neighbor, 
and we got them down to about a 200 square foot area of wetland that was going to be filled. It came back into the commission at the next meeting, and the commission, a whole commission, voted to not allow them to fill in the 200 square feet. They felt as though they could get a larger easement for Mr. Small and drive further onto his property to get around the wetlands. So when the conditions were done, it approved the house, but it said they had to come back with a plan for the driveway that didn't go across the wetlands. So I think what Paul is presenting, and I haven't seen it, but mm -hmm. I think what he's presenting is the plan that shows the driveway outside of the wetland. So it is a condition of the approval that they come back with that plan. I don't think it's an amended order of conditions. I think you just have to vote to approve the driveway as not interfering with the wetland itself. Or it could be a plan. revised plan. They could, you know, yeah. a request right. to review a revised plan more than an amendment. Yeah, that's right. I think we have to lay these out and look yeah. at yeah. it. He said you can build okay. the house, but you got to find a different way in. Okay. Sounds good. All right, so if anybody wants to visit that later in the week or early next week, I'll put out some times and we can. Yeah, throw, throw it up on the evening. Okay. Okay. Um, order of conditions for Adams, 700 Glades Road, addition and septic. Yeah, I think. Somebody else has to do them because I wasn't here, so I didn't even do that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we've looked at all four of these. I think Carol had some minor changes on them. One, only one. It was I one, think. yeah. The other three. Glades Road, don't remove any brush along the driveway you wanted that out. Yeah. Okay. And Farkas, 7 Oliver Street. Oh, can you vote? Oh, yeah. So we have <laughs> approval for um, Adam, 700 Glades Road. Somebody make a motion. Yeah. Should make a motion. Yeah. Can I get a motion yeah, for to oh, sure. accept the orders of conditions for Adams? I'll make a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion of, uh, to accept the orders of conditions for Adams at 700 Glades Road. A second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then for Farkas, 7 Oliver Street. Same thing. I wasn't here, but I, I remember the situation and I did read them over, so I'll make a motion to accept the uh, order of conditions. The second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. McCormick. 43 Wampatuck Ave. That was an elevating, just an elevating of, of an existing house. A motion to, motion to approve. Yes. Presented. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Norland, 7 Marshfield Ave. Septic repave, match existing. Yeah, I have a question on that. I was not here for that. Um, and what I wanted to know, and I confess I didn't really read these. Was there any discussion about allowing them to repave after this septic was installed? That wasn't at the last hearing either. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. Um, was Norland at the last hearing? This is the first I've seen it, so I had to. Unless it was way That's Sands Ave. I would just very both for Jim and I why you left the I don't think so. Why was this? Oh, yes. Yeah, it had to have been said. Hmm. Would they look into repave over it? Or? Well, it's part of from, That's my understanding. And we just had a situation on Webster Street where we didn't allow it. Um, again, I'm working on the consistency theory mm -hmm. here. Um, and that's why the question. Yeah, we could. And if you want to hold off and we can grab the minutes. Yeah, I'll take a look and see. Was that the one with the tanks? Yeah. 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 So, yeah, we did talk about that. And he said it would be the same amount of service. Yes, matter of fact, when he was discussing the tanks, um, that they had been uh, tested. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, we said that, that it would be Wait. the... And it was no... Yeah. Wait, do we have this? I don't know if we got this right. Is Norland the lobster pound? Yes. All right, yeah. so... Yeah. I'm sorry, my mistake. Right. 
so we did review this. We did request that. We looked at the tanks are presently to the left of the building, mm -hmm. and they're going to be used as is. Okay. Then the leaching is on the right-hand side to the back of the building. I believe that's gravel and it's remaining gravel. Okay. So I don't think there was really a change in impervious or maybe a slight reduction. Okay. That was my But we did ask that. Okay. We tried to remain true to form, which is... I was asking. <laughs> I just, Norlin didn't ring a bell. If somebody said it was the old lobster. The lobster. It's the lobster. Tax, we all remember. <laughs> yeah. So I'll make a motion to approve those as written. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Okay, what else do we have? <laughs> have any minutes? Yeah, um, yeah, I read those minutes because I was here. Can I make a motion to do them all at once or do we have to do them individually? You can do them all, any way you want them, Penny. Okay, I make a motion to accept the minutes of April 29th, May 13th, May 29th, June 10th, June 11th, all 2013, as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. What else? Um, we have to do 10th Street. 73 Penn Street, you want to right. make a visit down there, and they didn't come in, Pat? Um, I talked to Peter, he said the, uh, he was going to contact the property owners, and then I emailed them today to see if they were coming in, I haven't heard back from them, but, uh, but he knows that, um, I think he's out of town, but he knows that they're going to have to, you know, undo some of the stuff that's been done down there, but I think tonight's meeting was to talk about where it varied from the original order conditions and what we're going to be asking them to remove. Well, in all honesty, he needs the right set of plans. He doesn't have the right set of plans. Oh, right. right. So he needs yeah. to go and get the right set of plans, and right. that right set of plans will tell him all that fill when you're facing the house on the left side of the driveway, mm -hmm. all the way down has to be removed. Right. That absolutely no fill was allowed in there. It was supposed to be totally undisturbed. The only place he was allowed was for the driveway and to grade down and to see only the driveway, the edging there. And no a, plantings, no touching that stone wall. I mean, he just has to get the proper plans. He was going off a set of plans right. that showed the play guide, showed plantings, doing the stone wall. Right. That that was thrown the first meeting. And the shed shed the gets moved. The shed's supposed to be moved okay. up to the house. Yeah. I think tonight we're hoping that they'd come in and, and you know, say, gee, there was a mix-up, we're going to be getting this out of there, but um, we're going to be telling them the same thing you just said, that they have to follow the original plan and remove well, all that stuff. they have to remove what, that. What I don't got, want to get planted. Well, what got confusing, yeah. Penny called me, we went out, she had the file. There were numerous plans in the file, but you had to read the orders. The orders stated... October 16th or something like that. Um, and when I looked to open up the plan, it said April. So they, w they were not working off an amended set of plans. They had like the original set. Yeah. And we did have several meetings on that project. I think the minutes are in front of you. I think there's, we set of the minutes yeah, of the I final decision. Yes, that so we came, we came to that decision and there's a set of plans with two sets of amendments on them. And those are the ones that, that they need to look at. But I do think we should push them and say, you know what, this has got to go. It's yeah. in violation. Right. And, uh, you know, this isn't like Mr. Clark where there's a trailer packed on the thing. These guys have filled yeah. an area that was not supposed to be filled. Right. I think, too, that once they do start the removal work, it would be good to have someone who saw it in the past, what it used to look like to take a look because I can see where they were removing fill, but it'd be good to know what was. They'll, they'll know the second they get to it. It was so high packed and there's, there's well over a foot of fill in there. All right. So before we um, sign off on it, then someone who's seen it in the past should take a look just to see if it looks the same way as you had right. seen it in the past. Because I hadn't seen it in the undisturbed yep. way other than Well, even on the. Um, but if they're careful and about removing that loam, they can get right back down to where the old grass or sand yeah. was. And, it, and, uh, it's hard to have. Okay. 
All right, so I'll, I'll meet Peter out there with the right <coughs> plans and the right amendment. Yep. Well, I don't think it's, it's really a continuance. It's just, I do think that we have to be careful on our truth construction and that on truth constructions, I think these people were not their babysitters, but we really need, what plans do you have? And the audits, because nowhere in those audits does it say that they can sell. It very specifically says on the driveway. Very specific, you know, and um, I just think we just have to be more more careful. Don't just go peek, because even the um, the the silk fence, it's wrong. It was in the march. I mean, that was supposed to. It, it Frank had had to move it, but he had him. You know, he, he was a good ten feet into the march where he should have been underneath the. Yeah, so I think we have to be careful on that. That's all. Okay. What else do we have on uh, mm -hmm. River Street? Oh, yeah, River Street. Yeah, the baby. 40 River. Yeah. I have, that's the one that Paul Parrish brought to us. Um, they put the the wall, the wooden wall in the river. This was back in, it started, I believe, oh, in 2009. Yeah, well, yeah, it goes back. The orders were written, and the bottom line, when we closed the he hearing on it, well, we didn't actually, I forget, if, yeah, it they switched attorneys yet. a couple of times. They yeah. switched attorneys, but they, it either had to be removed, we told them, or produce a 91, file for a 91. Yeah. That's how, well, they did nothing. They didn't produce a 91, and they said, you know, we would bully them, blah, 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 blah. So nothing has been done on it. And the last time we did an enforcement order, I do believe, the orders of condition were issued July 28, 2009. An enforcement order was issued November 10, 2010, and nothing's happened. I thought it went to legal counsel a long time ago. But Are you? Have you? S I haven't seen anything with uh, legal counsel on this. Yeah. But um, but it sounds like. Are you familiar with the site? Have you had a chance to? Yeah, I, I've seen where the. The water isn't where the pier, uh, the uh, ramp is. So they were supposed to go and get um, a chapter 91. In order to keep that. To keep that wall in place. Wall. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And they never did. And then they're appealing the decision like after the fact. Uh, I have no idea. I, you know what, Pat? I that. do recall we got a letter or a phone call from an attorney that was representing them at one point saying, we yeah. haven't heard anything from these people. We're not retained anymore. Don't look oh, to okay. us from, you know, the, the, so. Um, the last correspondence I have, Frank, we received December 2nd, 2010, and that's when Richard Nyland had become their, their attorney, and he is telling us that we issued an improper enforcement order, and we need to remove, you know, blah, blah, blah. The original attorney, yes, she. Right. When you have a chance, I mean, this has been an ongoing thing. Maybe when you have a chance, take a look and see whether or not it ever did get passed on to the town's attorney. It's um, now. I, you took it. You dropped it off. Oh, that's the one we just brought to um, Brandon Moss. Yes, he had. He has it since Friday. All right. That's right. He was contacted by an attorney representing the property. Oh, okay. All right. So. Yeah. So he was gonna he was gonna bring that back today, that file back today. Well if you're having trouble with that, <laughs> Penny will look into it for you. Uh, <laughs> okay. That's a lot of years ago. My memory's gone. Okay. And on here it says um, enforcement one thirty six in the Um yeah, they were in 
last meeting, I guess. Yes. This was the abutted down slope from 136 Indian Trail. Right. Um, then there's been several emails back and forth and a letter. The abutter is on vacation. Um, Grady was supposed to have Paul Petroselli um, either look at to see whether the plan need to be revised or to work something out with the abutter. So I guess he called the abutter and said, what can I do to but we have a stormwater permit and everything in place on this. So we, you know, even if you work something out with the abutter, he might have done something that we don't know about, and he might have raised the elevation too high. There was, uh, I guess, a lot of silt. Right. Well, I, I guess I did, and I sent you back an email on, on that one because I got copied from Rick Grady. It went to you and yes. Carol that, as you say, the applicant or the, the Petroselli's, we're trying to get with the you know the abutter to the rear yeah. and and but as you just said you know there's people on either side of this as well and we have no idea what was done right. out there and right. the engineer was sort of saying well you know if they work it out with the neighbors would it be okay um, I'd like to know what was actually built there right. and it's not just the back neighbor but there's people that could be impacted on the sides right. and, and to me it was a pretty substantial change I mean, when I went out there it's like oh geez yeah. and I thought too that the building they would have had to go back to the building department to well, do well I don't uh, know that that's true I mean what what's what um Grady said to us I don't think the building's changed Mr. Ye said that the building isn't is different right. in size right. I don't know that yeah I, mean, I don't either yeah so yeah. I really think that Grady should be giving us I think we need to look at something and maybe in the form of a letter to Petroselli saying what we first want to see is is something from your engineer showing us just what the existing conditions are on the site now yeah. so that we can figure out the difference between what was proposed or what was approved and what is actually out there. Yeah, because I think Grady was saying, oh, yeah, it is different than what we oh, God, wrote, what they wrote up as a plan. Yeah, yeah it's hugely different. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of fill out there. I I can tell you, Frank, you and Paul Perry shut me up months ago. I told you that guy was pulling stuff on the neighbors. You don't remember, but I remember. You have a selective memory, they say. You have a selective, but Carol remembers. Don't you, Carol? Yeah, there is a lot of film. What would we have done if you slope. hadn't decided to re up here? I don't know. I don't either. We would just gone. <laughs> you needed somebody here to dig in. Anybody wants to visit that site too? Well, let's get a. I think I think we can get a, a letter. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can go out there with a plan. I did. Um, it was very clear that it it's quite a bit different than what was proposed. So I think that, you know, to just say that they're going to work it out with the neighbors. I right. So I'll start with Grady. Yep. But I think maybe even a, something, to Mr. Pet. Just say this is what we want. Yeah. You know, and. Uh, and yeah, if they can resolve something that in the end doesn't allow for flooding or whatever, that's fine. But because the wetlands piece was tiny and it was only at the front corner of the property. And then we wound up with the stormwater piece because it has that. Right. But it, it, what they wound up doing was taking all the material that they had blasted and whatever and just built up the rear of the property. Right much higher and larger than it was. Right, and one of our conditions talks about uh, monitoring the, the building of the uh, basin. They yeah. Have a, they have a wetland that they're supposed to be putting in place for stormwater. Yeah. And so that's legitimate to have us, you know, check up on that during the, you know, the process of yeah, the Yeah, I don't think we've gotten much from them at all. No, they actually should have started with some type of a temporary basin so that everything didn't wash off the property before they could do the stormwater structure, so. Right. But the only, this this piece that's in the rear is washing off because there's just a huge pile yeah. of blasted stone with earth dumped between it, yeah. and it's just a sheer piece that goes right. And the toe of that wall is almost the property line. Yeah. It was clearly supposed to be back 15 feet or so, and it wasn't supposed to be nearly as much material or as steep. They came in once for an amendment along the way, though. They did amend the stormwater bylaw, I think. I mean the stormwater. That was right. before he, he bought the property, yes. Okay. And he did change some things, but he, he still hasn't gone yeah. by. 
the amended plan. Right, there's an infiltration going in under the driveway and all that stuff is gonna be done too. Okay. Okay, all right. Um, the Edward Forst, Foster planting plan, we right. went out there and... Um, this is White's? Yes, I think it's in there. It's got pictures and it's got a list of proposed plantings. Um, that one, I think, yeah. So this was the one, the White's down by the harbor at the end of Edward Foster that had a replication plan that they were supposed to do and then all the plants they put in have drowned and <laughs> over the winter <laughs> and are not doing well at all. So uh, they really didn't not plant them, which is what the, accu the accusation was. They were planted and they're still in place, but they're dead. So, and they did get rid of all the Phragmites that was along the beach area. So now Frank and I went out there and they had removed some other plants in an area they weren't supposed to touch. So they need to do a planting, a border planting, and then they have to do wetland plantings, but a different species than they did last time. So, but they're right below the NOAA office, so people in NOAA look out the window and call whenever anything goes on. So. I think what happened is they were clearing this stone wall at the rear of their property line, which is the furthest away from the wetlands, but it's all in a buffer area. Um, you know, we, we had a hearing on this many years ago. They were proposing an addition or something, and as Pat said, to their due, they have tried to keep the Phragmites down and to plant some stuff, and the material they planted is just dead because it's, it's just the roots are wet all the time. It's, uh, I don't need to laugh, but it's almost like a vicious cycle. Well, did let, did but then let, they, then they uh, you know, they're sort of people just like what we had here tonight they're frustrated because we're saying to them well you can't plant x y and z and they're saying well look at my neighbor they just planted that whole bed why can't i plant that? yeah they what they're thinking now it's so wet that they're going to come back to us and ask us to, to create a pond like a wetland pond and put in pond vegetation because it's so wet out there which might be yeah but they had some flowers and stuff that they wanted that seemed to do well in the neighbor's yard. They wanted to plant that. What happens is you have the harbor and then there's a sort of a cobble dune and then it goes into their lawn. So on the inside of that cobble dune, they wanted to plant some other flowers and things like that. And so to their do, they're a little frustrated. They've put some time and money into and trying to and they have done probably the best job of anybody I've seen of getting rid of Phragmites. Yeah, they really have. I mean, and they it's responded to area. the violation letter within, you know, a couple of days, and they said, oh, we're doing something wrong. Come out and let us know. Because Pat and I go down the driveway, and there's a bobcat in a pile of loam. <laughs> <and all. laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, I'm not doing anything. Oh, nothing. Right. Nothing. Oh, so. But yeah, you do have to sympathize with them, that they have done a pretty good job of trying to get that. Fine. So, um, I mean, I really don't see... Yeah, the letter recommend uh, suggests 28 wetland plants and uh, you know something that can stand really wet roots. Who, who made the decision on what they could plant for wetland plants? They must have submitted they, it. Yeah, they yeah they must have talked they, to somebody. They get an in expert there. and they submit a planting plan to yeah. us, and that's what we'll be asking for, like on um, me and me and Hill, in in the orders, we'll we'll ask Greg like, to have somebody submit a planting plan for that driveway to go in that file. And they list in there, it's up to them to find the proper stuff. Okay. They um, have to have an expert when not. All right, do they do a soil test to find out if the soil is acid or alkaline? Because even if it's a plant that likes to be plant, likes to have wet feet, if the soil conditions aren't correct, it's gonna die every time. Right, yeah. Usually they're a wet wetland specialist that do yeah. cleaning things. And sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Yeah. <laughs> you probably down first cliff how's the horse doing? Oh okay, that's on hold because the newspaper wouldn't take the ad because there was money owed previously. So we were hoping to have a, a notice of intent submitted so that we could have a public hearing on that. Uh, and right now everything is kind of on hold. But MSPCA is involved and Board of Health's involved and all the abutters are involved. So, um, 
Yeah, the horses, you know, <laughs> under storm conditions, is up to its knees or ankles in uh, salt water and fresh water. So it's not a great spot for the is horse. Is the horse either. still even there? I haven't seen it in the it, corral. The horse, yeah, I, it's not in the corral. It might be in the barn. The barn's under the house. That's not a barn, please. Or whatever, <laughs> yeah. It's in the horse's room. It, it's on horse's the horse's bedroom. Exactly with some plywood yeah. surrounding it. Yeah. Stalled, yes. Mm. I think the horse is gone. No. I think the horse is gone. Gone, gone? I think so. I thought I heard somebody talking about that. Really? What's that? I didn't hear it. Yeah. yeah. Blue factory. No. no. Gone, gone? No. Well, anyway, the animal control person oh my God. wrote to me. Oh. I saw that today. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't know. All right, well, all right, so we don't have to have that hearing. I, uh, no, the hearing, they'll, you know, we've talked to them about getting their ad in, okay. straightening out their bills and doing all the conditions because it can't stay the way it People is. People think this is simple. Yeah, this is not easy. <laughs> all right. Is that, it? is that all of them? That might be yeah. it. So what I was supposed to do over the last couple of weeks was try to work out some lists now that we have a new roster of, of members, what I had kind of hoped to do was get with Carol and go back over an old list of, of different projects that the commission has and kind of put those out there and see um, what sort of interest different folks have. I've already talked to Bill about the spit. And I've talked to Tony Jones. We've talked a couple times. He was on vacation a couple of days off. Yeah. supposed to hook up Thursday. Okay, so, I appreciate uh, that. But I didn't get to many more of my list because at the end of the day after that heat, I really didn't feel like doing much of anything. <laughs> but we will, I will get with Carol. She'll be so lucky to have me come in. Um, Frank, can I just throw in there? I was talking to Tony and Tony would like, no, would you like him to do the CR? I do, I do. And I just. And I told him I'm sure he does because that is a job yeah. none of us want. Right. And he also really would like to help with implementing the Conway and he, and he just and he knows you just haven't haven't gotten back to him so I said okay. I'd, I'd ask. Appreciate it. He, he would really And the like other to night CPC that. voted to expend some money so we can get some extra copies of the Conway report so we can distribute oh, some and we good. can put some at the library. Oh, and, that's wonderful. Yeah. That and I'm going to see if we can also get some maps printed so we'll have a couple you know right now Cindy has all those but we're going to get some printed that we can have. So yes. if somebody comes in and wants an explanation of some of the pieces, well, we'll these are things. Tony, where since he's not on the commission anymore, he would be more than happy yep. to, you know, and I take, appreciate take that. the lead on that. And we got to because and, let's face it. And the we, CIs that are left to do are really just—it's pretty. I know, but he's he's ta talking. He's more more than willing to do them in the future. I appreciate it. You know, from the get go, which would be. Wonderful instead of letting them. Yeah. You know, well, they won't, they can't be accumulated anymore no, because what, finally what they've decided is they're not going to pass on a piece of property yeah, unless the, the yeah. CR is, a, is um, a conservation restriction. And any piece of property that the commission acquires, and we, we have care and custody over most of the open space in situate. When we acquire that piece of property, there should be a conservation restriction on it that stipulates the uses that are allowed, how it's going to be maintained, all those sort of things. And then there should be a third party that keeps an eye on that. In this, most cases, it's been the Maxwell Trust, a land preservation group, that is supposed to oversee that, or some other entity, Cohasset Water, yeah. so that s nothing happens on that property that's not supposed to happen on it. And some of these CRs got dragged out, never got done, and they go way back. And it just, if we got a, because we bought the land with um, community preservation money, there's certain regulations that are supposed to happen. So it's a, it is something that's important that we wrap those CRs up. Um, and finally someone said, well, you know what, we're just not going to pass until the CR is already there and can be done at the same time, which isn't a bad idea. So, and there's a different attorney handling the CRs, which hopefully, hopefully somebody will yeah. get done. But there's a whole bunch of little, you know, we have the driftway, just as an example, I, I talked to Bill about the spit. There's 
places like the Driftway Park that it would be nice if different members sort of had a piece of property or a particular project and then they could say, you know what, this is where we're at. Or make some contacts yep. and either get some volunteers. Did, did we get a letter from that, and I don't mean to shift off again, but the group that was interested in maintaining the Driftway Park, are they still in? Yeah. I'm, I'm sure they're still interested. And are they still, do they still want to do it? They are doing it. Okay. <laughs> and are we going to pay them to do that? We can make a donation if we want. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so there's the students from the high school working with Kevin McCord, right? And a couple of ladies at the time. I don't know if Kevin's involved. Okay. And and we can reimburse that, or, or or Carol said make a donation to to compensate them for some of their work in this piece. Do well, that's a separate thing from the department. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do we have any idea how many? Um, folks there are or what kind of money we had done before? I think before it was uh, $1,000. $1,000, I believe yeah. so. And then, it, kids. and then it was yes. cut. It used to be just for the kids that worked on our property, but the girl would be claiming that it would have to be divvied up. I mean, they do lots of projects. You know. yeah. So if we, if we did that, if we approved that money by, in, our, in August 5th, could that get to them, do you think, by the end of the summer? Okay. So we'll find out what the the amount should be. That's, I know that's what it was, and then it was cut from town administrator. Cut it, and we didn't have the funds available. Oh, we didn't have any money. Yet. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. It was just. That's well, we'll see if we can do that through a driftway fund or something. All right. Yeah. I think that's where how we did it before. I think it should be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's that? What was the fund? <coughs> we have money in in the driftway. Park, the Driftway Park has a fund that was, and, and it used to be funded every year at town meeting. It hasn't been in quite a while. The logic was because we didn't use the money, we shouldn't get any more instead of like building up some so that we could do work on the dock or piers or something like that. Project, yeah. But because we weren't spending it, we didn't need we didn't it. Have it anymore. Could we go to CPC like to redo that dock at some time? It, it can't be. It can't be for just maintenance. It can't be maintenance. That's right. We yeah. actually. I don't know if you were serving. We have a huge plan for that drift. Oh, I know. Went all the way up to an amphitheater yeah. and kiosks and. But we can pick and choose from that. But that pier is going to have to have some work before. Two, it's the old sand. But would waterways do that too? Because they were doing, they did the other. Thing. We could do some joint stuff, yeah, but it's right, it's yeah. it's really they, not they a. Get money. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. not a. It's not like a marina right. type pier. Right. It's it's more like a recreation fishing pier, that kind of thing. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> but it needs maintenance. That area well, needs. That, that's yeah. what I was it gets a lot of use, but yeah. it doesn't. No, the DPW kind of cleans up the weathered. parking lot. It's pretty weathered. But it, it for all the use it gets, it doesn't get much care. A couple of quick ones. Dave Ball was going to come tonight and talk about the Seawall Committee because we have new members, and he's asked if he could continue it to August 5th. <coughs> so, 10 minute discussion about what they're up to. Um, also, I was wondering if people are interested in trying to go to a two, weeding, two meetings a month rather than every other week at some point. It would cut back by about four meetings a year. You did two every month. I don't know. Asia, because there's five. There's some five Monday months, you know. So you'd have two of them that you'd have meetings on that. So yeah, and as long as we can hit our deadlines. Yeah, yeah. You'd have to hit the 21 days. You couldn't go beyond 21. So. Yeah. Uh, to be but honest, I mean, Pat, a lot of time when we get to Christmas or Thanksgiving, we we, we have cut it back. Yeah. You know, and then we have the weekend meetings. Nothing urgent on, so we would put Yeah, you could out. always do that too. Yeah, we, um, but just as we a have practice. Done that in the past. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Because then, you know, then you could do it. It's always the first and third Mondays of the month or yeah. whatever. And then, um, 
And we could limit the meeting time till 8 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, that's why we haven't had many hearings this summer. Like right. in the past. I mean, I'm Heavy on enforcement, and late on hearings. Yeah. But, uh, also, do, uh, Lisa and I wrote, there was other site visits if people wanted to hear about what's going on. Lisa and I went to Ocean Front and Ocean Drive, and they're quick, but they all require letters. You know, um, a gas company project where they dug up some stuff, and then the homeowner said, oh, it's half dug already, I'll dig the rest. So that there was one of those, and then there was a paver, pavement kind of issue where there's a big paved area, and they want to replace it, and it's probably in the edge of the velocity zone. It's been there for probably 30 years, 50 years, and uh, so we were talking about maybe asking them for, give us back some, do some gravel, some pavers, and then maybe some, but we haven't spoken to them yet, so. But uh, we can, if you want, we can write it up. Or, and I guess today, you sent pictures, Lisa, right, to everybody today. That was one of the ones uh, where the gas company had done some work, so. No, I think I just sent them to you. Yeah, I was going to say. I oh, I thought it said conservation on it. Uh, okay. Um, usually the gas company's pretty good about. Yeah, yeah. They, they, their work might have been pretty minimal, and then the homeowner might have just taken the rest of it on himself. So. Okay. But that'll be a planting and a letter and all that, so. Okay. Gas company has major issues. Oh, really? Because the, the pipes storms? that were laid over streets that have now been interrupted, people have built over the whole front street. Those pipes were laid in 1927, and they are wow. rapidly disintegrating. And so street by street, they're digging up. Wow. You have to start on my street in the winter. Oh, yeah. They're gradually <laughs> working right down. The, yeah, yeah they usually they're issues. pretty good about it, but they're going through backyards, they're doing that. Yeah. Is that Hamarock Road or what's the road that That's what I'm talking about. about. The, 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 yeah. people, the residents have blocked off in many yes. places. Yeah. And you see that also in Egypt when we remember we're out in yep. Surfside where they've done the same thing. Yeah. Thanks, Rosemary? Can I ask yeah, a question? Are you aware that uh, there is the second sea level rising report um, coming? Meeting next Monday. I see nothing. No, nothing from the webmaster. Really? Well, yeah, I haven't seen it. Is this uh, a Marshfield meeting or is it's this? It's a Marshfield meeting, but it's Doug's first session in Marshfield. Yeah, we haven't heard group. about it. <laughs> is this the? Yeah. Because they have the new FEMA maps out now. Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, this is. This was about. a different. This no. was a Gulf of Maine study, yeah. and the second meeting was at the community building slash Pier Forty Four, right? Yeah. yeah. That, that wasn't was the, the kickoff. First. That was the first. Second one is at Haddad's in Brent Rock. Next Monday? At 6.30. Someone called to tell me that tonight. Really? Yeah. That it was announced by the ATV. Really? It's pretty good. Jeez. I think he's supposed to have dinner at the Haddad's first and then go up to the meeting at 6.30. Is this the 29th? Are they going to take us to dinner? I don't think so. You Next Monday, did you say? Because we were notified well in advance the first time. I know. That's why I um, think nothing about Thank you. It. Well, does Laura, well, maybe we can. 29th? I mean, Laura had been. It's in Laura's um, vacation emails. Thirty next Monday night. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We'll check with Laura. Maybe if you think of it, check with Laura tomorrow. Or I'll try to. Yeah, I think she's back. She back tomorrow. Back tomorrow. Okay. Thanks. What do you think they're gonna tell us? The sea level is rising. It's rising. Yeah. <laughs> Still rising. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I wish they'd do? Can I ask them? Show us the we, um, do we have anything else? Do we have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye.